Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is a video being made to assist you with the installation of the Wedgetail Ignition System uh, for Airhead BMWs, made in Australia. Of course, you can see the Australian-made logo there in the bottom and the Wedgetail insignia on the right-hand top corner of the control module. This particular control module is the uh, what we call the, the base model, but it's not really anything basic about it, except it's the one that has one trigger and one controller. Uh, you can see the two cutouts there for the for the uh, status lights that flash when the uh, the um, machine is in operation and functioning well. There'll be a blue flashing light in each one of those. Uh, this one is made uh, for a, uh, a setup with a single trigger unit and a single controller. Now we have them available in various configurations, uh, right up to twin triggers, which are switchable, and twin controllers which are also switchable in the same package, same size package. Uh, but this is what most people fit to their bikes for general running and general travel. Uh, so that's what comes out of the box. You can see by looking to the back one that it, it is a completely different unit on this. This is a monoshock, an R80 monoshock. That's the factory setup. It has had a replacement controller in it. It's smaller. And the heat sink is much smaller. And this heat sink that we use in our bikes now is the same shell as what is used in the last of them, like the uh, R100 GSPDs, the Mystics, the R100Rs, and some of the later monoshocks as well. So uh, it is a bigger module, but it does fit all the way. We make uh, brackets or give instructions on how to fit them. When you take the box out and open it up, you'll get one of these. You'll get one of these brackets right here, there, that is designed to replace the existing bracket and allow the module to fit in. You will also get the wedge tail ignition can, which replaces the initial, the initial, uh, sorry, the original can that comes in this bike. You can see there it emblazoned with the with the wedge tail insignia. Now the reason I'm showing you this is not just to say what a pretty blue it is and how it's made in Australia and everything. But you will notice that the triangle behind the eagle is, has the point facing upwards when I'm holding it like this. And all of our things, including this bracket, it has a, an insignia emblazoned on this back panel here, there, behind there. And it is there with the point facing upwards to show you how to orientate the part. So that the, the point of the triangle always goes towards the top. If it's a point ignition plate being replaced, it's the same. That's just something for you to keep in mind when you're going through the installation process. And I will be stopping the camera a couple of times to, um, to show you various things. It also comes with a spare female plug. The male plug is on the can. We include one of these because some of the older bikes, uh, this plug is damaged on the harness end and this allows you to replace it. There's the pins in there that have to be inserted and the heat shrink to seal it off in the same way as this one is, as you can see when it's finished. So I'm going to pause the camera for a second now. I've just pushed the control unit onto that bracket and you can see there how it fits. Now here's some things that you need to know uh, when you're installing these. First of all, behind this bracket, there are earth wires. When you take the old bracket off, there will be earth wires. There's two bunches of them comprising six or seven wires there. And they've got to be reattached and they must be clean and fresh metal surfaces. So what I do before I start an installation is I put aside my essential tools, which are here on the ground beside me. Um, there's number five... Um, hex bolt wrenches. This here uh, is a an M M6 by one metric thread tap. Try and get it to be in focus. Which I use to tap out the holes that these set screws go into. And I get some uh, sandpaper and some uh, workshop abrasive pad to clean up both the fittings and the mounting point and I run the tap down the holes to make sure that we've got a good earth because if you don't have a good earth you won't get a good operation out of your system. 
Also, while I'm under these bikes and while I'm working on whatever model it is, I always take all the electrical contactors apart and clean them and spray them with something like WD-40, CRC or whatever other kind of contact cleaner you might have. Uh, and on this particular situation, because this bracket is a little bit bigger and these late model ones have got this wiring block, I've also taken the opportunity to wrap the wires that come anywhere near. They're not quite touching the back. That one there is just under it. Um, but with some self-sealing rubber tape. It's made by uh, 3M in the States. Uh, not the cheapest, but by far the best. You just peel it off, bind it over itself, stretching it as you go, and it will fuse itself together. I've put three or four wraps under there, so there's no chance of that ever vibrating and cutting. That's just a preventative measure. Spray all the contactors, pull these plugs apart here. These bits come out on the monos. Spray both sides. Spray your voltage uh, regulator plug. Same with these. They come out. Spray them. Clean them. Make sure that they have good contacts. Do some proper maintenance on that while you're fixing the bike and putting in this wedge tail system and you will never have a problem with it after that. This is a later model, so it's got the twin pole coil, 0.7 ohm resistance, which is what we convert most of the laters to. Uh, it's a black coil, so it's been replaced at some point. It's time, I'd say. So now I'm going to stop it again just for a moment. Now, when you get your wedge tail uh, ignition system, it comes with all the things you need to mount it. Um, the little nylock uh, nuts are there and the washers are there to bolt that all up. These modules all come pre-drilled like this along the top. That's to fit onto the earlier model uh, 81 to 84s like your RSs um, and RTs and the 107s and stuff like that that were made after 1981. They have a brake splitter up here on top of this bar and the old module fits onto that and that centre hole will allow you to bolt it uh, back down onto there. There are some alternative mounting methods uh, but that one is uh, where they come from on the 81 to 84s. This is on all the later bikes. Uh, they've all got little different mounting spots, but generally speaking, we provide you with the necessary mounting hardware to get that to work. Now, when you take the old one off, you have to disconnect this plug. It can only go back on one way. If you have a look, there's three mounts on one side and there's only two on the other. There, I'm trying to get this all in focus while I'm talking to you. Tap it like that, there you go. I think there's a very bright, bright light here above me that's causing this camera to change its uh, angles a bit. So it does come, this plug, with a wire retaining clip. Now you can see the end of it just there, the silver bit. And to get that off, you have to prise, get a, get a little um, scribe and get it in there and prise this out and prise the one at the other end out to release it from the lock tabs that are on the side uh, of the plug. I'm just going to try and do this down here so it's not shining in the light. See the little lock tab sticking out there? There, where my finger is. Mm, it's playing games today. There you go. If you don't prise that wire out, don't take it right out of the fitting. You just have to release it off the tabs. You will break the module. So do take it off, please. When you put it back in place, you can see how it works. It's bridging the gap. We put it, these the two sides on this module here. So the plug can only go on one way. And you simply turn it around. I'm trying to do this one-handed while I've got a camera. I'm not going to be able to do that. Just hang on. So you can see now that that's plugs push back up on, the wire clips are back in place there and they are holding that plug securely onto the module. There is a rubber ring in there to keep it waterproof as well. And this is designed, as I said, in such a way as that when the trigger fires down below, that light flashes, when the coils discharge, signal is sent uh, via the controller down to the coils to create spark, that one uh, illuminates with a blue LED. So that's as simple as that. We've now mounted the, the, uh, the module up, cleaned up all the connectors, made sure it's got a good earth, and that is important to anybody watching this video. It is really important to make sure the earths are clean and well and truly fitted properly.
It needs that because the earth for this system is actually external. The, the earth uh, for that controller is actually in this plug, not in the module itself. So now I'm going to pause this again for a moment. I have to do this because I'm on my own and I'm going to take apart the, uh, the can in the front cover to show you how that works and how we have to fit that and how we can time that. Uh, I'll be back in just a second. You won't even know I'm gone.